so this bathroom has been full of that stuff for ages so my idea is to create some shelving across there a net underneath and just as a temporary place to store all the stuff that we need to store for the beach first i needed to visit hugh's wood store oh look at this piece look at this guys we're just having a bit of a wood store clear out but like, it's bits like this i've kept this like no one makes marine quality ply like this anymore look at it straight as an arrow and that has been previous life being like a bulkhead as well so that's like look at that look at the straightness on look that. at that half inch marine ply like even if you bought a full sheet of this from like the fancy robin's timber in southampton or wherever it is be a couple hundred quid for a full sheet of it and it wouldn't be as good as this they just don't make it like this anymore look at that hardwood ply look at the quality of those those layers lovely yeah this is why i keep this stuff like you can rip out an old boat and just get loads of old really good quality and then what you can do is you can keep that wood in your shower and not have a shower and you keep it in there for three years and then every time your wife goes oh can i use that for making a shelf you go oh it's quite a good piece i might need that so i'm not sure even though it's like the perfect size i'm really like reticent because it's like it's quite big she's gonna end up like cutting some line just like down there but she'll probably cut our section like that and i'll be like I, I, one day that I am looking at it going, is that going to be a cupboard door for tills or something? But, oh, look at it. Oh, good look. desk for her. Oh, good. Oh, I could use that for my desk in my office. Oh, lovely. Look at that. So I wasn't allowed the good stuff. So what could I have? You have to clean up. Oh. So I'm getting on all right. Hugh will hate it. So I've made this here and I'm just putting these up here figured out that I'm a bit more of a like a holistic DIYer so I don't like measure I just like put screws in where it feels right yeah example I probably could have got four masks across here but it didn't feel right so it felt right to put the screw in there which means now I've got two flippers and I've got to try and find space for two more masks it's what felt right it didn't feel right to make it all fit no. Holistic DIY. Found that there was already some screws there and there, so perfect. See what I mean? Solutions just come to me. Enough DIYing, we went off to the supermarket to restock. Now, I just ran. I just ran five kilometres to the marina and back to go and pick up the trolley. And the kids have shared their croissants with me. Look, look at me this bit at the back at the end. These crumbs. These, tell she's came over and gave me the package. You can have the crumbs if you want. <laughs> this trolley has earned its place on the boat. We were a bit nervous coming to Barbait as the reviews on Navali warned of dinghy thefts and everyone said that there was nothing here. But we disagree. We stayed here for a few days and we found loads to do. There's a community of wild cats that live around the marina and they get fed by volunteers. Fed for by volunteers. Do not disturb. Uh, Abandon. Uh, Abandon. Assault. Assault or sub or act. We're off for a walk into the forest, have a picnic. Yee! There's always something cool to see, you've just got to look high and low. No, they got colours. Look, you can see Africa's just over there. There's some trees in the way, we need to get higher.
The higher you get, the better the view. What is the collective name for a group of cactus? Why are they actually just breeding? Or, or is it a wasp and a spider? It's so hot. Well, you are wearing long sleeves and trousers. No, are these you are shorts. Yes. <laughs> well, you are wearing leggings. We thought we'd come to the end of the road, but no, we found a new trail with a promise of a watchtower. We found out that this is one of 100 watchtowers in Spain, built to keep a lookout for the Barbary pirates. Very contemplatory sat here. We're in Spain, you can see Morocco, you can see the Straits of Gibraltar, and it's just like, like millennia of human history, just like this is a massive important junction point for the world. And just like you can imagine Roman galleys or Napoleonic fleets or whatever. Just like, and you can see so much shipping going through right now. You can see it really crystal clear, they're going off that way. So where are they going to? They're going around Africa, I don't know. It's just like, yeah, it's just really like uh, incredible. I think it's one of the best sea views I've ever seen. Humbling. Ever. Humbling, it's just amazing. It's really cool, like that's literally, Africa and we're in Spain and that's and yeah and not only that and then you've got the whole the orc, orc things which are just they're just fascinating I love I'd love to know more about them this is literally their house like between here and you know Tangier and up to Gibraltar to the Barbate and stuff and where we are now to refer all this this is just their this is literally their house we are I can see it all I can see their entire like, them, we're just in, what, we're just what do you want to call it? Patrol out. area, I don't know what it is. Uh, territory. territory. Thank you, I've got there in the head. My brain's gone very slow. This is amazing. I think I think the largest sea battle is, is Battle of Trafalgar. Five and a half miles out there. You'd just you'd have heard it, you've been here and you'd hear it sound like thunder. What was it? Like 60 ships of the line all firing at each other all day. That'd be an incredible. Hell of a thing. Tilly wants to get an Uber. Yeah, we didn't mean to walk so far. We weren't that prepared. Not enough water, warm clothes, but it was worth it. Yeah. We passed our lunch spot and found a bit of lettuce that we had dropped had become a picnic for these ants. Exactly. We didn't plan on such a long walk. So, Tilly is running a wire through from the electrical cupboard over there, down, through the boat, and we're running it through to the water tank. <laughs> I'm an electrician now. <laughs> Today, 
<laughs> Tilly is not an artist or a gymnast. Today, she is an electrician. <laughs> <laughs> it helps having small hands. Make sure it doesn't hang into the build, please. Cool. Okay, go down to the water tank area. Okay, it's gonna come through that hole in the wall, can you see? Okay. Yeah. So feed it through there next. You see I'm passing it through now to the hole. Can you see it? Under everything. For now, that's it. Cool, well done. That's the only way to get in. Oh no, the water pump's going! No! <laughs> no! Is it, is it, does it need to stop? No, it's fine. It's okay, Tilly. Yeah, it was just Hugh being hilarious. Yeah. Stony was beer. 2021, blimey, it's ages ago. In this little floaty part to tell you whether the tank is full or empty. So let's get started. Here's how to wire it. Push the wires from the tank sensor into two of these Servo GX. Can you remember to do that? Okay, so they go in that way. Go for it. Okay? Yeah. And do the same with the other one. It's about the same amount. Green to bring up the menu. Press the menu button. Seven. Menu. Menu. YouTube has been pretty good at teaching us everything we need to know over the years, and this is a skill that we're passing on to our children. We're getting there. This is very exciting. Tilly's learning from a YouTube video. It's all wired in. Look, it's in here. It's plugged into our servo. That little wire down the bottom there. There it is. Plugged in. And Tilly is up here doing some uh, programming for us. Settings. You got it sorted? Then what's he say next? Go back to settings levels. Is that Scroll it? up and click on display language. Display and language. Toggle the show tank overview setting to on. Show tank Press overview setting. Twice, oh, no. And now you should be able to see. Press your... show tank overview. No, that's it. Turn it on. Okay, now go back twice. <gasps> no. Is it done? Hey, tank. Yay! It says forty-six percent full. Yay! <laughs> We've got to calibrate it though because our tank is not square. Do you remember, remember that? High five. <laughs> High five. <laughs> uh, that's cool, we've got a tank level. Uh, except for it says fuel tank. It's not a fuel tank though, is it? It's water. And it says 46% fuel, full. But at the moment, it's the, the pipe, the sensor, is linear. But the tank is triangle shaped, isn't it? Yeah. So we've got to do the calculations, we've got to do the mass and put in a formula. Either that, or we can work it out by filling up the tank from empty to full and timing it and making observations. Because this is just based on resistance on how high the gauge is. That's pretty cool though. Yeah. Yeah. Here is Hugh. Solve now before we go sailing tomorrow. We're not telling the YouTube community about my thing I did. You are. No, it's too embarrassing. People will laugh at me. What's happened to you? Nothing. Everything's absolutely fine. We dropped some paper on the tank. <laughs> my normal method, <laughs> right, of checking the level in the diesel tanks. <laughs> Literally, this is moments after we finally have a successful water tank gauge, which actually works. Up there, we have water tank gauge, and I'm a bit tight. I need to buy three more gauges, one for the other water tank and one for both diesel tanks, and install them. Diesel tanks, I need to strip out the diesel tanks before I can install gauges, because there's going to be so much gunk in there and putting more gunk in there by drilling holes. So it's a major job. So I haven't got a gauge on the diesel tanks. What I do, go a bit of paper, roll it up like that, put a finger like that, Go to the top of the tank, here, here the top of the tank, and then the stained wet bit of this is a dipstick, it's a dipstick. But this is what I did today. I put it in and then that happened. Oh shit. <laughs> Sorry, the engine covers up. Did you just another one in? Not in there, not in the diesel tank. <sighs> That's what happened, okay? And unfortunately, the access to the diesel tank is a hole about that big and the diesel tank's 300 odd liters. <laughs> so that bit of paper's in there. So it's a short solution for the moment. You may recall from our adventure uh, in Northern Spain, where we had the diesel traveling from tank to tank, 
And what we have is here is we have the return, well, sorry, the feed shut off. You can isolate from starboard ports or have both feeding. But the issue was that the return is a splitter and just goes both ways nearly willy. So at least in my plumbing kit, I've got a couple of these little single shut off valves and they're the right size. So for the very least for the moment, I'm going to put these in on the return on the diesel. Because uh, ever since Spain, I've just been feeding off both tanks equally. But what I'm going to do now is just feed off the tank that's unblemished, which happens to be the fuller tank at the minute. This is not a permanent thing. I need to get a bit more better one that looks a bit more like this. But fundamentally, and they had loads, they were really cheap in Mazagon. And I thought about buying one then, but then I said to myself, I went, no, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to focus on one job at a time and get one job at a time finished. At the time, it was the AIS aerial and the water tanks. So that's two jobs. So I was like, let's not add another job. Anyway, luckily I have this as a spare. This is now going to go into this tube here. So the return is going to be isolated as well as the feed. So I can feed and return just from the one good tank, which is uh, nearly half full. And that will get us to, to Gibraltar. And then one day in the very distant future, possibly six or seven years time, I will do what I did in those water tanks over there. I'm going to get the top off completely, literally scrub the tanks out, tanks out, clean everything, clean all the feed pipes, the whole lot, and then put a new lid on and then spend about three years watching it leak very slowly and then have to fix the lid again. This is why I don't want to open it up because it, at the moment it doesn't leak. First off, I'm going to try cutting it with my uh, plumbing pipers, cutters, which are not that strong, but it may well end up being a multi-tool job. But I thought I'd waste 28 seconds of your time finding out. Oh, hey, all the way through. Look at that, there we go, a bit of diesel leaking out. This is, did seem, I measured it, it seemed the same size seemed it did seem to be well that's quite thick um... i agree but it, once it's in it would be definitely yeah. undeniably in would it not like help heating the pipe up So, I'm going to end up back where I started, but with more knowledge. <laughs> so, we put a cut in. This, even though I've thought I'd measured it with the vernier calipers, but I measured it, basically it's the wrong size. So, that's no good. But, I think there's enough flex in the remaining return hoses that, as I only cut a section that much off, I'm hoping I can stretch them together. So, I'm now just doing that. We're nearly back to where we started an hour and a half ago with this reassembled, just slightly on the wonk. And the only thing we've learnt is that's not the right size. Still got filter paper in the filter. That bit's missing, so it's that much shorter, but it can just stretch. But I can at least take that to make sure we get the right size. Ah, uh, yeah. I also measured it as well, haven't I? But that's fine, I had to cut it off. Luckily, I cut it near the end. I'd cut that. I was thinking about cutting it over here. If I'd done that, we'd have been stuffed. Anyway, so we can get to Jib and I can order some bits to arrive in Jib. And I can get used to calling it Jib. Sound like an absolute idiot. <laughs> We're making our own homemade custard. We found left to show you. And there isn't just Tilly's one. What's the verdict, kids? Great! My verdict. Okay. Uh, not a verdict. Here's, here's a way to describe how I think it's good. Because I'm torn. I was torn between whether or not the custard or the cake was better. And I'm saving the custard for last and I'm not saving the cake for last. <laughs> so, that's so delicious. But I accidentally let all the custard all so delicious. So now I need to put the, the cake last. It's interesting because, like, 90% of the ingredients, when you make custard with the home kit, like you only had a little bit of powder and the rest of it's just your own sugar and your own milk. You know what I mean? So it's like, it's just whatever's in that mystical powder. Mm -hmm. 